Spooky is making moves, and we're gonna talk about it after the bumper. What do you mean oh. you don't subscribe to my son's YouTube channel? Mama, no! Just snap the damn ball, RJ! What's up, kid folk? It's RJ Young. I am not on a step mill. Consider hitting the like and subscribe button because I upload a video every single day. It's always OU related, college football related, sports related. We have a good time, and today I wanna talk about Bookie. Look, a man was named the Jim Thorpe Award Player of the Week, which is an award given weekly as we lead up to who will be named the nation's best defensive back. And it's got to be some time since Oklahoma's had one of those guys. Why did he win this award? Well, because against South Dakota, he recovered a fumble, he had a tackle for loss, and he had an interception. He returned 30 yards for a touchdown. Not a bad day's work. And on top of that, he was named Big 12 Defensive Player of the Week. So that's two awards, one week for Buki after one game. To which, let me let me let me talk to the critics for a second. You're saying, okay, RJ, he played against FCS opponents, guys that might be his size, guys that he might be able to style on, but you know what? We don't really care. All right, cool. You don't care, but the rest of us do because that was one of two takeaways that he got, or those were two takeaways that accumulated three because Jay Davis had one after not having any against Houston. And on top of this, Buki is a really good measure for what the secondary is doing because we're looking at this and we go, okay, they've given up 60, well, not given up. There have been 65 attempts, pass attempts through the air against them. They've given up 43 completions, right? So on, it's not necessarily that they're holding people down on completions. And as Mike Gundy once said, a defensive back should win three of every 10 attempts on a, on a football because, you know, wide receivers know where they're going. Quarterbacks know where they're going. You know the story here. But if you do the math, they're at about 66%, which is not – that's not that bad, right? If we're looking at 70%. But also, on top of that, Parnell Motley is clearly being picked on and clearly rising to the challenge because it's pro football focus put out this stat. He's given up one catch on 12 targets. Now, 12, 65 is a little bit more than a fifth, right? So they are targeting him, whether it be deep or intermediate, and he's coming up with something. Now, I'm going back to watch the film, and he hasn't really had that many contested opportunities, but... Hey, man, the numbers are the numbers, and we'll see through two games what that means. Same thing with Buki. When he's getting tested, he rises to the occasion. And I think that's what we're really watching. It's not necessarily what the yardage is because they're holding FCS South Dakota and Houston to about 218 yards passing per game after holding Derek, Houston, or Derek King to 167 yards passing per game. And that's a big deal to me because last year, Kansas's quarterback, Peyton Bender, threw for 167 yards on Oklahoma defense. Also, last year, the pass defense was 129th out of 130 teams. They were really bad. And folks were all on Buki and how bad he was as a strong safety, playing sort of the nickel spot. Now he is a true nickel in Alex Grinch's scheme. And he's one of the players that's thriving in it. And like everybody else, he had to earn Alex Grinch's trust. So now you've got two independent defensive staffs that have told you straight up, we expect Buki to start because we think he's one of the best players that we have. They've also continued to throw Parnell Motley out there, who they believe is one of the best corners that they have. They move Woody Washington to safety. Jaden Davis is lower on the depth chart. Trey Brown is still out there, but Trey Brown had a missed tackle, egregious as it was, that ended up being a Houston touchdown. Hasn't played outstanding football yet, but we know what Trey Brown can do and we know what he's capable of. The whole bit about this is, one, Buki's winning the award, so he's getting the headline. Two, take a look at the whole secondary whenever we're doing this thing where we want to say whether or not the secondary's good or we want to say whether or not one player's good because the worst player in that secondary might have been over the last couple of weeks, DeLarian Turner Yell. Sort of kind of looks out to lunch sometimes when we're talking about coverage. He really does like to come down and, and lay a stick if he can. Chance Sylvie coming in to try to spell Buki or as another safety hit or miss. So you got more or less four guys that you can trust out there, right? Because Pat Fields is doing a job when he's not picking up a penalty. He had an opportunity to have the first interception of the season, but it went right through his hands, through the bread basket in the Houston game, right? He had the late hit penalty, pass it for and so forth, so on. But Pat Fields, we know that dude can play. So I think you got four spots solidified, right? And that's what you wanted. You want a four spot solidified. You're going to wait on the nickel and then Buki, he's happened, right? We got a fumble recovery, we got an interception, we got a tackle for a loss, we got a guy that is feeling himself, 
He feels comfortable in the defense. He understands the calls. He knows what is being asked of him. Grinch is apparently getting to him, and he's getting to Grinch. So I, I like that connection. I also like the idea of Roy Manning as a good cornerbacks coach because, you know, there are folks that would be like, yo, man, what's an outside linebackers coach doing coaching corners? Apparently, coaching them up, coaching them well. And I get that you're not necessarily enthusiastic about all of this because it ain't LSU and it ain't Alabama and it ain't Georgia. But this is a glass half full scenario as you get an opportunity to dunk on another team in UCLA. Not really going to get tested offensively until you get to Texas Tech. September 28th after the bye week because Matt Wells' boys, they go fast and they go a lot. That said, I mean, they played Montana State. They played UTEP. They're going to play Arizona in week three. We'll see what it looks like after that. But I'm encouraged by what I've seen. And obviously, if the Thorpe Award is being given to Buki, he is the best defensive back player from week two. And that means the best DB in the country for that week was at Oklahoma. When's the last time you could say that? All right, that's it for me. That was it.